Okay, so this video is um, global resource consumption and security and the um, syllabus point is the disposal and recycling of consumer items including international flows of waste. Okay, so let's go through some definitions. So the three R's are reduce, which is reducing consumption of a certain product such as energy, reuse, which is using a product more than once, Recycle, which is the reprocessing of industrial and household waste so that materials can be used such as glass, paper, and plastics. Okay, so this is a diagram that I took from my notes, and it's basically the waste hierarchy. So the waste hierarchy is used in the evaluation of processes that protect the environment alongside resource and energy consumption from most to least favorable based on sustainability. The aim of it is to extract the maximum practical benefits from products and generate the minimum amount of waste. So the whoops. Okay, so the this is okay, so first we have removing. So removing is like the best um option of waste but obviously that's very difficult especially for plastics which take which are very difficult to um like degrade um and they can like last in the environment and the oceans for a really really long time the next one is to reduce so just already you know consuming less of certain products and buying less like plastic products or um electronics um like if they're not necessary and then resource, so changing the materials of the actual sources, so maybe changing to more sustainable materials or recyclable materials or biodegradable materials, reusing, so using, um, for example, a container multiple times or using like a bag or like a paper bag multiple times. Then you have recycle, which is of course using um, like changing the materials to be reused into something else um, but that can be quite difficult and it can also lead to a lot of waste because of the like, difficulty of separation um, recover so like capturing some of the value of the waste and then finally return which is return back to the environment in a benign way okay so now we're going to look at global waste production so this is from The Economist and it shows regional waste generation. So overall, we see that there is, okay, so these are like different forecasts. So this is 2016, 2030, 2050 for all of them. Okay, so let's look at 2016. So the most kind of recent because obviously these are projections. So 2016, overall, the highest um, regional waste generation was in East Asia and the Pacific, followed by Europe and Central Asia, then South Asia, then North America. Um, those were the highest and then the lowest were Middle East, Northern Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean. And now let's look at the projections. So the projections do seem to follow the, you know, like which countries currently have the highest. Like, apart from Afri Sub-Saharan Africa, which actually looks like it's going to increase quite significantly especially compared to the middle east and north africa latin america and the caribbean north america however realized that they all are projected to increase um which is likely because of increased development increased population increased demand um however the kind of biggest increases look like they're going to be in east asia and the pacific south asia and sub-saharan africa and i would say that it might be because of the large development in these areas however um i don't know the exact reason it but just be aware of like these different distributions of waste generation in the globe and um what they're projected to look like oh wait i just realized there was also waste generation per person okay so let's look at the overall trend so the most waste generation per person actually is in north america mongolia um greenland and then kind of middle middle to high is most areas of europe here um like the rest of north america and and then we have kind of low to middle which is mo 
most of South America, um, most of Asia, well, not most, well, kind of most. And then, like, very low waste generation is in these parts of Asia, and then quite a bit of Africa and a little bit of South America. Okay, so that's the general trend. So this, so basically Europe and North America look, and also Australia, look like they have the most waste generation per person that may be due to the high economic development in these places. Um, and maybe due to the lower populations kind of average because developing countries tend to have um, more populations, more growing populations such as China, um, India, so you're dividing like the amount of waste by more people, so that might be the reason why it's lower, but yeah. Okay, now we're going to look at global waste production again, and this is just um, municipal solid waste. Okay, so the trend here does kind of coincide with this one, because we see that the largest kilograms per person per day is kind of around North America, Australia, New Zealand, um, parts of Europe, most of Europe here, and then lower lower um, solid waste per person. It tends to be in concentrated in Africa and parts of Asia here, and um, also Russia has relatively low um, waste per person. Um, and then kind of in the middle we have China, parts of Northern Africa, Middle East, parts, little bit of Europe, and much of South America. And then here, of course, we have the um, Caribbean. Okay, so here are the global waste flows. So the top plastic exporters globally are the US, Japan, Germany, the UK. The top importers are Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, and Hong Kong. So it's really good to be aware of this kind of general pattern because it is mentioned in the syllabus points. So let's look at more specific waste flows. So global e-waste production. The definition of e-waste is discarded electrical or electronic devices, used electronics which are destined for refurbishment, reuse, resale, salvage, recycling, through material recovery or disposal are also considered e-waste. So the disadvantages of e-waste are that e-waste contains a lot of harmful chemicals such as lead in CRTs of computers, and mercury and flat panel display screens. This can be absorbed by humans through contaminated drinking water. E-waste can affect the environment as well as human beings through illness. The process of recycling means burning wires to recover metals, melting circuits also, and also acid stripping. Just this causes so many problems to the environment. Long-term effects on our planet are still unknown. Okay, so let's look at the global e-waste flow. So this diagram from at from nature shows most electronic waste from developed countries ends up in poor countries that lack regulation. China processed around 70% of the world's e-waste in 2012. The rest goes to India and other countries in Eastern Africa and Eastern Asia and Africa, including Nigeria. Okay, so this actually does differ from here because this doesn't show China. However, it says that 70% goes to China. So there might be some kind of discrepancies here. Um, okay, but, okay, well, this was in 2014, and I'm not sure what year this was, so it might have changed. Okay, so 42 million tons of e-waste are generated each year. In 2014, the world was 41.8 million tons, followed by Asia, then the Americas, then Europe, then Africa, then Oceania. Okay. It said here that U.S. produces the largest amount of e-waste that would match this. African nations produce little e-waste. Um, Norway generates the most e-waste per person. I don't know if this is per person or I don't think it is. China ranks second for total e-waste generation, but low relative to its population size. Okay, so I think that these statistics have definitely changed, but you get the general trends. Okay, so let's look at a case study from China. So Giyu is described as the e-waste capital of the world. The industry is worth $75 million to the town each year, but the population suffers from elevated rates of lead poisoning, cancer-causing dioxins, and miscarriages. It is, last, it is the last stop for tens of millions of tons of discarded TVs, cell phones, batteries, computer monitors, and other types of electronic waste each year. 
In this area of Guangdong province in southeast China, the industry is characterized by thousands of small family-run workshops interspersed with residences, schools, and stores. The workshops employ hundreds of thousands of local and migrant workers to extract copper, silver, gold, platinum, and other materials for resale, often burning or using acid baths to separate out the elements of interest. So this does have a lot of dangerous implications for the environment, and now we're going to discuss landfill and incineration. So the definition of landfill is a place where waste is disposed by buying it and covering it over with soil. And the issues of this are that toxic substances leach into the soil and groundwater, causing environmental hazards such as electronic waste that contains, contains mercury. Methane is released when organic materials are compressed. That's also a flammable, flammable gas, so it's dangerous when it's built up in concentration. It can also create visual pollution. Okay, and a case study here is the Amin Bazaar. So urban solid waste management is a prevalent issue in Bangladesh. The Amin Bazaar threatens wetland and farmers. However, the rapid growing population has been creating more waste and excessive rubbish. Many of the impoverished throughout the country also use the landfills as shelter and homes due to the lack of housing facilities in the country. However, the conditions are very unsanitary. Okay, finally, we're going to look at plastic waste. So... The definition of plastic waste is the accumulation of plastic objects in the Earth's environment that adversely affects wildlife, wildlife habitat and humans. So what are the issues here? Plastic takes hundreds of years to decompose. The chemical bonds that make up plastics are strong and made to last. The decomposition rate of plastic typically ranges from 500 to 600 years depending on the type. Burning plastic is incredibly toxic and can lead to harmful atmospheric conditions and deadly illnesses. Therefore, if it's in a landfill, it will never stop releasing toxins in that area. More than 8 million tons of plastic enters the world's oceans each year. Each year, 400 million tons of plastic is produced, and 40 of 40% 40 of that is single-use plastic that we'll only use once before it's binned. Plastic waste is also washed to shores from ships and nets used for fishing. This is not this does not only kill and harm wildlife, but it also pollutes the water. Marine animals can also get trapped in nets and or swallow the toxic particles. And this is a um, graph showing the Great Pacific Garbage Patch located between Hawaii and California. Um, and it shows you the plastic buildup. So center is very, very high and then it kind of gradually decreases. Um, but this is 79,000 tons of plastic in the Pacific Ocean, which relates to plastic waste, obviously.